I want to share a surprisingly simple thing that you can do in order to deal with overwhelm. And the reason why I say that this is surprising is because whenever you feel overwhelmed, isn't it true that the last thing that you want to do is take on anything else? You're sort of like, I can't do one more thing. I barely have time to go to the bathroom. I'm so overwhelmed. And that's why what I'm about to recommend is incredibly surprising because this is going to seem like it's super counterintuitive as a solution based on research and based on, for sure, my personal experience as a solution to moments in time where you feel overwhelmed by life or by the world or by what you're facing. Now, what is that surprisingly simple solution as a way to deal with overwhelm? Well, the surprisingly simple solution is to take on a simple little challenge that you're going to take on every day. You're going to take on something that uh, aligns with growth and change. It pushes you forward and it gives you something to look forward to every day because part of the reason why overwhelm is so debilitating is because when you're overwhelmed your focus is scattered across absolutely everything and you're thinking about your family and your health and the news and the this and the that and the presentation and the emails you didn't do and and at the end of the day each and every one of those things is not really that important there's probably, can we agree, one, two, or three things a day that really matter, that really need your attention? And the reason why we get so freaking overwhelmed with life is we allow our attention to get scattered and to get pulled in a bazillion different directions. And the solution to feeling more in control and to literally dealing with overwhelm, which is just an overwhelming amount of things that really most of which are not that all important to you, but they're just distracting you, which then pulls your attention away from what really matters. You see, I'd rather have you do two or three things a day that really matter to you and let the rest just kind of fall where they fall, right? And so the surprisingly simple way to deal with overwhelm is to pick one thing that you're going to focus on every day for you. Like no matter what, you're going to do this thing. You're going to add a little structure. You're going to add something that you're committing to as a way to laser your focus on something that's in your control. It's absolutely awesome how this works. So I'm going to give you an example. When my husband first got diagnosed with depression, he became very overwhelmed. And what I noticed is that he decided to take this online fitness challenge. That's a little bit more than I'm telling you that you should do. But he did this fitness mental toughness challenge called 75 hard and even though it was a pain and even though it was hard having this challenge to focus on as something he had chosen that he was going to commit to every day gave his life a simple structure that had a lot of things that were distracting him fall to the wayside same thing happened with our daughter she became very overwhelmed after she graduated from college did not know what she wanted to do she was in a really unhealthy place and committing to a simple set of new healthy habits that really were things she could control and committing to doing it for three months, it gave her this real discipline around focusing on what mattered to her. And the overwhelm started to disappear because when you create a simple structure for yourself, and you say, you know what I'm going to do this week? No matter what this week, I'm just going to get up when the alarm rings and I am going to move my body for 30 minutes. And that is the simple structure I am going to put in place for me. And the reason why simple structures like this are so important is because in a sea of this, which is what overwhelm is, like all this stuff, you're like, nope, there is one thing that I am going to do for myself today. And that is the thing that I am going to focus on. 
And when you give yourself a simple structure, because you decided you're going to work on one thing, it puts on like blinders. Have you ever seen horses that get those blinders kind of on that? Like it is focusing your attention on something that matters to you. And that one surprisingly simple thing, give yourself a simple structure of one thing you're going to do every single day that gives you something to look forward to, that gives you a way to anchor in a sea of chaos and distraction. And you know that if you could just move your body for 30 minutes a day, or if you just got up and you journaled every morning, or if you just meditated for 10 minutes a day, and you were going to commit to doing that, a simple structure. And interesting, I see Pam saying, Mel, those little things, you know what it does? It keeps a horse from spooking because there's nothing coming at them this way. And isn't it true that life feels like it's coming at you like this? So a simple structure that you put in place, that's something you're excited about, you're empowered by, that you just wanna do just because a challenge, it raises your gaze. It raises your gaze from this crap and all this stuff, and it laser focuses you on one thing that you can control that you're gonna do for you. And I'll tell you, it never fails. The second that I feel overwhelmed, I guarantee you, uh, my simple structures, getting up when the alarm rings, high-fiving the mirror, moving my body for 30 minutes, journaling, picking one thing to make progress on, drinking my water, like all the reaching out to front, that stuff goes by the wayside. The simple structure, which you don't want to put in place because you're so overwhelmed and you can't handle one more thing, it's actually exactly what you need. And it's also a reason, I'm so glad you guys are getting um, something out of this quick pep talk because I was thinking a lot about this today. I, I, was, I was driving into Boston, we're looking at uh, office space, we've got a ton of stuff going on, a uh, project with Audible, we're going down to New York this week. I'm so overwhelmed, I started to cry in the back seat of the car heading in. And I'm just, I just said to the person sitting, I, I don't think I can do all that, I just can't do all this. And then I thought, oh my God, I know what's missing. The simple structures that I put in place for me. The simple structures that always make me feel a little bit more in control. They've literally gone by the wayside because I have allowed myself to get so overwhelmed. And the way that you slice through the overwhelm and you take control again is I want you to say, one thing in the comments, one simple thing that you could add into your day. Is it 30 minutes of exercise? Is it a walk outside? Is it um, meditating? Is it getting up when the alarm rings? Is it cutting out uh, alcohol for the week? Is it spending 10 minutes working on a project you've been avoiding? What is one thing that you could add back in as a simple structure. For me, it always comes back to this when I'm overwhelmed. I gotta go back to the basics. Do you have any other question? What are you dealing with? What are you dealing with? I was trying to be there for my husband, for my kids and other people. And you you're know? not there for you though. So is it more overwhelming the way that you think or overwhelming because you have so much going on and you just physically can't get to all of it? Physically can't get to all of it. Okay. One thing that I want you to do, and this is going to sound really stupid, but do you sleep with your phone? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> I used to have it right now. <laughs> okay. I want you to stop doing that. Okay. 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 And here's why. Your phone is distracting you from the things that are important and your what's on your phone, the number of emails, the text people are sending you, the news that's really scary. If you have that sucker next to your bed, do you wake up in the morning and then lie in bed and look at it? <laughs> it's just my first thing. It's like, thank you, Lord, I'm awake. And then the phone. And then the phone. And when you lay there and you look at what's on the phone, how does it make you feel emotionally? tired before I get out of the bed. Yes, and does it start to make you feel overwhelmed about everything you need to do? Yes. Okay, what I want you to do instead is I want you to put the phone like in your closet or in your kitchen or in your bathroom, plug it in, leave the ringer on because if your kids need to reach you, yes. they can call you. I'm not gonna text you. 
tell work. If you need to reach me at 2 o'clock in the morning, don't send me an email. Don't send me a text. Call me, okay? okay? And then I want you to go to bed. I want you to wake up. You're going to thank the Lord that you woke up. You're going to think about one thing that you're really grateful for to settle yourself, okay? okay. And then you're going to get up. Okay. You're going to get up, and then I want you to go out in your kitchen before the madness happens with the kids in school, and yes. it's back to school, and it's overwhelming, isn't yes. it? And I want you to take five minutes, that's it, five minutes to just sit and think about what you need for you today. Okay. Just one thing, okay. just one thing. Are you gonna call your mother today? Are you going to um, read a book for 20 minutes today? Are you gonna go for a walk at lunch today? What's one thing you're gonna do for you? Okay. And then let the rest of the day unfold. Okay. You can then look at your phone and get overwhelmed, but I want you to at least start a tiny little self-care okay. practice in the morning. Okay. If you like to pray, when you get out of bed, don't pray in bed. You can thank God for the fact that you got up, but get out of bed. Okay. Go into the kitchen, do your morning prayers, think about one thing for you. Okay. Then let the rest of the world in, okay. Okay? okay? I want you to just crack open, crack open a little bit for you, and then it'll start to expand. You can make okay. it 10 minutes, you can make it 15 minutes. But if you win the battle in the morning so that you can get out of debt bed without feeling tired and overwhelmed, mm -hmm. We can start to spread that feeling through the rest of your day. Okay. How do you feel? I feel better. <laughs> okay. It sounds dumb. Yeah. So now you got big stuff going on. And you got a lot of demands on your time and you're worried about a lot of people. But I need you to start to build the skill and the habit of waking up in control and of starting your day that way. Okay. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The tool that I'm going to give you is something that I use all the time. I call it a brain dump, okay? It's so simple. It costs you nothing. You can do it several times a day. Anybody can use this. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to take out a blank piece of paper. I don't care if it's lined or it's printer paper or it's the flip side of a bill that you just paid. And you're going to take that piece of paper and you are going to vomit everything on that paper that is in your brain, absolutely everything, okay? And you can just dump it all out there. And if you wanna get fancy pants with this, you can draw a line down the center of the paper and you can write important stuff on the left and shit I can do later on the right, okay? But you don't even need to do that. I'm just adding that in there because I know a lot of our listeners are very, very, very like kind of, I like to keep things organized, Mel. No problem, you can add a little pizzazz to your brain dump. I personally, I'm so scatterbrained with the ADHD that I just need a blank piece of paper and I just dump it all down there. And so let me think about today what would be on my list. Oh, um, packing for Boston, calling my daughter to remind me, remind her that it's uh, dinner's at 7.30. I got to check in for the plane ticket. I got to make sure that, um, uh, oh, I haven't even looked at the weather yet, so I don't even know what to pack for Boston. I don't know what it's going to be like in New York when we land there Saturday to support another friend who's doing this concert. Oh, I didn't even pick up my ADHD prescription yet, and I need to get that on the way out of town. And so you can see that just like you, I suffer from not only legitimate overwhelm right now, but I also have a case of lifestyle overwhelm, that I overwhelm myself because I manage all this crap on my head. So you feel a sense of lifestyle overwhelm, brain dump everybody. Get it out of your head and get it down on a piece of paper. Because when you can get it down on a piece of paper, you can be more strategic about creating a system to get it done. And it feels so good to do this. When you're managing all this stuff in your head, ugh, this is why going for a walk with a friend is so therapeutic. Not only are you outside, but as you're walking and talking, you know what you're doing? You're brain dumping. You're getting all that stuff that you've been ruminating about out into the air. And when you get it out on a piece of paper by doing a brain dump, like just pour it all out there. That's what you need to do. I, I was about to tell you 15 other things that just came to mind because what, what starts happening when you do a brain dump is it's sort of like pulling a thread on a sweater that sucker just keeps on going. So don't be surprised if there are some days that you fill three pages. So now, what do you do now that you've dumped it all out on a piece of paper? You're going to take a highlighter. And you're going to highlight the three things 
that you must do today. These are your priority. This is what's important. So what are the three things I need to do today? I need to pick up my prescription. I need to pack for Boston and I need to work on this eulogy. Those are the only three things that matter. And you want to know something fascinating about life is that if you just can dump everything out and you can highlight the three things that really matter that you get to them today, if there's an emergency or if something else is a true priority, have you ever noticed it gets your attention anyway? If one of your kids is sick or a friend needs you, they call. If you have to fill up the tank of gas, you'll realize when you get in the car and it's on empty, like mine often is because my son borrows the car and never fills the car back up. Um, if you realize you've run out of milk, you'll realize it when you open up the fridge and you'll deal with it. But it's not really that important. It's not life or death. It's not a big thing. You need to pick the three things that are the actual priority. So lifestyle overwhelm. Brain dump, highlight the three things that actually matter, and that's how you beat that lie that everything's important. Because when everything's important, nothing is. And you get to say what's important. So pick those things. All right. Our next question is from Cindy. And Cindy's overwhelm comes from the fact that she says yes to everything. I can't wait for you to hear the lie she's telling herself because I think you're going to relate to this one too. Hi, Mel. This is Cindy. Do you have a strategy for not overcommitting for daily tasks? It sounds so ridiculous when I type it out, but it really is destructive and sparks feelings of failure when I cannot accomplish all I believe I should be able to handle in a single day. Thanks so much. Oh, Cindy, I love you. Cindy, I relate to you too. You have a case of lifestyle overwhelm. You have perfectionism and you also put a ton of pressure on yourself. And there's this huge lie that we overachievers tell ourselves. You want to hear it? There's so much more I should be doing. Everybody's doing more than me. I should be doing more. I need to do more. Here's the truth. You need to do what needs to get done. And the rest does not matter. And so here is the rule that we're going to build upon. Imagine that you do the brain dump. Your problem is you highlight everything that you just dumped on a piece of paper. And so I'm going to give you this tool. It's called the rule of three. There are only three things that actually matter. And I often say to myself when I start getting a case of lifestyle overwhelm, when I'm trying to add things to the to-do list, when I'm putting pressure on myself to do more, when I feel weird that I'm like kind of done with what needed to get done and now I don't know what to do with myself so I feel like I should do more, Mel, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. This happened to me last night. So last night I was scurrying around with a case of lifestyle overwhelm because I'm trying to get through my to-do list and I'm realizing, oh my God, I don't have any clean underwear for this freaking trip. So I've got to do laundry before I have to pack, which of course only makes me feel more overwhelmed. So I grab the basket of laundry. I tromp, tromp, tromp up the stairs. And as I'm climbing up the stairs to the second floor of our house here in Southern Vermont, I look up and all of the walls in the upstairs hallway are blank. They have a brand new coat of paint on them, but there ain't nothing hanging on these walls. And I immediately feel this wave of overwhelm come over me because I don't have any pictures of our family in our new house. And I've always envisioned that we will do a family picture wall on these three walls. And I start to think, oh my God, wait, are we going to do... Uh, pictures that are black and white with black frames or should we do those sort of blow up things that uh, wrap the canvas around the things that are sort of like an inch thing and they're colorful and do I do them different sizes or and I start to feel completely overwhelmed and then I start to beat myself up for the fact that I haven't done this that I don't have any pictures identified, that I also let my Shutterfly account go because they just moved to a whole thing where now you have to pay in order to have your pictures stored there. And I have all my old pictures on Shutterfly. And oh my, now I'm beating myself up about that. And so now here I am with a load of laundry. I have put the basket down. I didn't even realize I did. And I'm looking at all three walls having a panic attack about 
these freaking pictures and this project that doesn't fucking matter. Pick three things. Three things, Mel. The rule of three. The only thing that matters is getting this damn laundry done so that you have underwear to wear while you are delivering a eulogy. And you need to, I don't remember what the third thing was yesterday, but I think I got it done. It doesn't fucking matter, Mel. So don't get overwhelmed about what the third thing was yesterday. You know what the three things are today. You got to work on the eulogy. You got to pack for Boston. And what was the third thing? Oh, yeah, I got to pick up my medicine. Thank you, Amy. See, I don't even know. Lifestyle overwhelm. I have legitimate overwhelm, which means I know that the dial's cranked up right now. And so I also know I need to give myself a little bit of a break, that I am going to be in this state of feeling amped up until I get through this eulogy. That's just the legitimate overwhelm that I'm feeling. But I don't need to add on top of that a dose of lifestyle overwhelm by obsessing over a picture wall that I have not uh, done anything about in six months of living here. Six months. Okay. So that's it. That's it. Okay. And the same is true for you. Lower the pressure. Lower the pressure. And for those of us that have trouble sitting still, or relaxing, you got to be really careful about lifestyle overwhelm because it will rob you of your ability to be present. It will rob you of just being able to sit down and read a book or go out into your garden and weed or pick up a phone and make a date to go meet a friend for coffee. And that's how this creeps into your whole life. This lie that you say that you got to be doing more. No, you don't. The whole point of this is to enjoy your life and catching yourself when you get a case of lifestyle overwhelm and reminding yourself of the rule of three, that will help you lower the pressure, focus on what matters, and create more time to just chill and enjoy your life, okay? So Leela is up next, and... I love this because she listened to the episode we recently did that you guys loved. Holy cow, it was one of the most shared episodes on Spotify. I'm so glad you got a lot out of it. And a lot of you responded to the fact that I connected your habit of procrastinating to the fight or flight response that we have when we get stressed out. You know how when you get stressed, you have that fight, flight, or freeze. Procrastination is a form of freezing. And so that episode is Procrastination, the Only Way to Stop Procrastination, based on research. Again, we will link to it in the show notes. And Leela had a follow-up question on that, and here it is. Mel, this is a huge thank you. I'm an artist, and also I procrastinate, and I get stressed, freeze, and then end up doing nothing. I heard what you said on the procrastination episode, and I think wearing the stress backpack is super heavy right now, and I plan to shed it today. I need to manage my time better. So now I need to figure out how to get back to my easel and start painting. I can't wait for your next episode. Thanks so much, Leela. Hey, it's Mel. And I just want to talk to you since you're watching this on YouTube. First of all, thank you for being a fan of the Mel Robbins podcast. You have made us one of the top ranking podcasts in the entire world. Um, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel because... It's your support that allows our team to bring this to you at zero cost. And so that's really important. And I don't want you watching this on YouTube while you're driving a car. Will you take me with you um, by subscribing to the Mel Robbins podcast on your favorite podcast platform? Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher. You can listen on Audible. Anywhere that you listen to podcasts, please subscribe to The Mel Robbins Show. It really matters for a growing show like ours and allows us to continue to bring you all this great stuff at zero cost. Okay, let's go back to the show. Leela, I'm so happy you're on our walk today with me and that you shared that because procrastination is a form of lifestyle overwhelm. And in case you haven't listened to that episode yet as you're taking this walk with us, when Leela said stress backpack, 
she's using a term that I used in that episode to basically say all those things that are going on in your life, the things that are causing you stress, whether it's conscious or subconscious, you literally carry it around with you as if all that stress is in a backpack. Joni, my friend who was caring for her mom, backpack of stress. Everybody that you've heard on our walk today, the demands of their life, the pressure that they're putting on themselves, all of that is a stress backpack. And you have one too. And what happens when you feel really stressed out is you can start to freeze. And then what happens when you freeze and you push things off and you procrastinate, you get stuck in lifestyle overwhelm. You're in this vicious cycle of pushing things off and then beating yourself up and then feeling overwhelmed because you're pushing things off that you really want to get to. And so what is the tool here? Because there's a huge lie that you tell yourself when you procrastinate, okay? And I can hear it. And the lie that we tell ourselves is I can handle this all in my head. That if I think about it, I'm working on it. Not true. Not true. It's one of the reasons why I use that tool of a brain dump all the time to get it out of my head, to not manage it in my head. Because if it spins in my head, it turns into rumination and nothing gets done. Just like those blank walls, those pictures are not getting done by me spinning thoughts about it. And so the real thing I want you to understand is that if it truly matters, you have to schedule it. Things that matter end up in your calendar. And so one tool that I want you to use, Leela, is ask yourself this. This is a journaling prompt that you can use, everybody, that I just love. How can I make this easy? How can I make this easy? What's the simplest way that you can make it easier to paint? And for me, I'm going to share with you. I have to do the things that are important first thing in the morning. It's not that I'm not an evening person. It's that by the end of the day, I am so wiped out and just gassed. I don't have the stamina or the willpower or the energy to force myself to do things that require energy. Um, you know, David Goggins, who I just love, he has his alter ego, Goggins. Goggins pushes himself and has the mental discipline. And I freaking love that. But I don't want to set up my life so that every night I've saved the thing that really brings me joy, I have to like summon up what, what, what researchers call, and we've talked about this in other episodes, it's called activation energy. Chick Me Sent Me High, who's a famous psychologist from the University, University of Chicago, studied uh, motivation and flow states extensively and realized that this resistance that we feel to doing things that we've put off that requires activation energy and getting out of bed, pushing yourself to paint. For me, it's exercise. And if I put off exercise till the evening, it's not happening. It takes me a hundred times more energy to drag my ass to that Peloton treadmill at night than it does to drag my ass to that Peloton treadmill in the morning. And so ask yourself, how can I make this easy? Maybe you need to do it at night. Maybe that is easier for you. Maybe you need to do it in the morning. Maybe it's the weekend. Or maybe you need to, if you can afford it, you need the structure of a painting class. One of the ways that I jump started exercising, and I realize not everybody can afford this, but one of the ways I jump started exercising was to start taking classes again because I would pay for it and then I was motivated to go and I knew once I got there, I could outsource the motivation to the instructor that would be yelling at me. Maybe you need a friend to do this with you, or you need somebody that's going to be your accountability partner and be really annoying on Saturday morning and text you and be like, hey, did you paint yet? I'm not meeting you for a walk until you did. And you can trade that kind of thing. Like, I think a lot of you know, for example, that I uh, do a lot of the ice baths, you know, where you climb into a really cold barrel of water. Uh, or you jump into an icy pond or a river up here in Vermont, or you take a cold shower. Do you know how I make it easy? I do it with Chris, my husband. Chris is like living with a monk. The dude is so stoic. He just kind of climbs right in there. No big deal. He shames me into doing it. That's how I make it easier. He goes in first. Now I'm like, oh God, now I got to do it. But if I have to do it myself, it's hard. And so that's what I want you to understand. Procrastination creates overwhelm. 
And chronic procrastination creates a vicious cycle that becomes lifestyle overwhelm. And so understand that, and that's huge that you understand that. And then the second thing I want you to do is remember, get it out of your head. Don't manage it there. It's got to get scheduled in real time. And then ask yourself, how can I make this easy? Because you can't. And there's no reason why the things that you need to do have to feel so hard. And the reason why they feel so hard, everybody, is because we're not taking the time to go, okay, first of all, am I in a lifestyle overwhelm situation where I need to be kinder to myself and I need to have more compassion for myself and I need to keep reminding myself that this is a marathon and I need a little bit of stamina and I'm not going to be able to get to everything. I remember when I was doing the talk show, I had this experience where um, my whole, most of my team came from Oprah Winfrey's uh, talk show and from her organization. And so I was surrounded by all these people that were super, super experienced. And my executive producer arranged for me to uh, talk to um, a really, really famous talk show host uh, whose show is no longer on the air. And this guy spent a couple hours or spent like an hour talking to me. And I'll never forget what he told me. He said, Mel, being a daytime talk show host, doing 175 shows in six months, this is a marathon. He said, the most important thing that you could do is protect your stamina and be kind and patient with yourself. And you're not going to be able to live your normal life. You're not going to be able to go out to dinner with friends because if you tape three shows in a row at CBS Broadcast Center four days a week, you are not going to have energy. And by the way, you can't afford to get sick because the show must go on. And so right now, tell your family and your friends that you love them, but you are about to go into a bunker right now and you are about to focus on this. And then when you come up for air, you will be able to focus on having fun again and being with everyone else. And I think there are times in your life like that. Maybe you're studying for a dissertation. Maybe you are in the middle of applying to medical school. Maybe you're going through a divorce or you've lost somebody that you love and you're grieving. That is a moment of legitimate overwhelm. And the best thing that you could do is identify it, call it out for what it is, and be kinder to yourself and remind yourself that if you are, you'll have the stamina to move through this. And you will move through this. And there will be a time in your life where you will not feel this way. But for now, it's about putting yourself first. And for those of us that are also struggling with lifestyle overwhelm, it's okay. You now know. And now you have free, proven research back tools that you can use. You got your brain dump. You got your rule of three. Remember, it doesn't fucking matter. You can do the photos later. Nobody cares but you. And make it easier. Make it easier. That's it. And this stuff is so powerful. Like it, it works so quickly. You don't realize how quickly you could break out of overwhelm because like me, you've probably been stuck in this vicious cycle for so long that it's just the air you breathe. But there is something so much better that's available to you. You can create a better life. And that's why I wanted you to hear from a listener named Michelle Last. And pay attention to the joy and the lightness in her voice. I wanted to invite Michelle on this walk with us because I want you to know that this is available to you when you finally take back control and you stop letting overwhelm run your life. Holy shit, Mel. I just listened to your podcast on procrastination and it changed everything. You're the first person I've heard talk about money anxiety, oh my God, in a way that resonated with me. And you know what? I paid a credit card bill today that was six months late. I was in freeze mode. And when you said that on the podcast, I burst out crying. I mean, it was like a gut punch and you thawed me. I paid that damn bill this morning and all of a sudden I realized that I have more time on my hands. Like I was sitting there wondering what I was supposed to do. 
I had energetic time because I'd been thinking about this bill for six months. I've been torturing myself and holding myself back from my greatness. It's like five, four, three, two, one. I mean, what if it doesn't have to be hard? What if I can do the damn thing? Thank you so much, Mo. I'm really forever grateful. Ah, oh, Michelle, I'm forever grateful. And I'm really proud of you. And the thing I want to really highlight, because I can hear the energetic freedom. I can hear how light you are. And what I want to point out is, until you do the damn thing, you don't realize how much thinking about something and avoiding it and feeling overwhelmed by it, how much it's robbing you of energy. I relate to that because I feel that way about that damn picture wall. And I've gone through periods of my life where I didn't pay my bills because I couldn't pay my bills, but I thought about my bills all the damn time. Overwhelm is torture. Feeling like you're stuck in a vicious cycle where you got to do more, or you got to move faster, or you got to put this, it's just pressure and it's keeping you stuck there. And so now you know the truth. You can focus, you can prioritize, you can use the rule of three and just focus on doing the important things. Not everything is important. And when you stop acting as if it is, you will able to get done what needs to get done. See, overwhelm goes away the minute you start to take control. And that usually happens, honestly, with a simple pen and a blank piece of paper. That's it. Do the brain dump. Pick three things. Tell yourself, that doesn't fucking matter today. Remind yourself that anything that is an emergency bubbles its way to the top. And always ask yourself, how can I make this easier? How can I take the pressure off? How can I do the damn thing? And just pick one of those three and get started. Five, four, three, two, one. Pay that bill. Make that call. Write that next paragraph. Roll out that yoga mat, pick up that guitar, or for me, write that eulogy. And then on the plane ride home, log into Shutterfly and see if you can find all of those photos that used to be stored there. Do what you've been avoiding. Follow the rule of three and give yourself a fucking break if you're feeling legitimate overwhelm because it will be over. But you have a choice over whether or not it's your lifestyle anymore. And for crying out loud, stop telling yourself those four lies. No, you can't handle it in your head. No, rushing won't make you fit it all in. And no, everything's not of equal importance. And no, you don't need to do more. In fact, you need to do a lot less. You just need to do the things that really matter to you. And when you do that, you, my friend, are going to get your life and all of that energetic time back. And I so want that for you. Whew. I feel better. I hope you feel better. I wish you were here so I could give you a hug. You know, after a great walk with a friend, you give each other a hug. And you're like, okay, when are we doing this again? Are we doing this? Uh, yeah, you know when we're doing this again? We're doing this on Thursday. And between now and then, I want to make sure I tell you, I love you. I believe in you. And I believe in your ability to really focus on what matters to you and go create a better life for yourself. If you feel overwhelmed, if you feel like the world is coming at you, if you feel like you're spinning a million plates and juggling a million things right now and you're starting to get concerned because you're jing. Actually, let's go talk to Chris. Let's talk to Chris and see. Chris, can I ask you a question? He's probably annoyed. I was just talking about how transformative that was that you did with me. See this list that he's got right there? And what would you recommend if other people were doing it? I just said, you got to show up with a blank piece of paper. You ask the other person to go, email. well, why don't you tell us the steps? Can you tell us the steps that you just did with me? The only thing I didn't have other than a pad of paper and a pen was handcuffs. That would have been useful. Why <laughs> would you say that? Uh, I think what it, other than a pad of paper and a pen, it, it took 
extreme discipline to just listen and wait and listen and wait, be patient and listen and just keep trying to keep you on task from email to email just so that you can get it out. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't relate to it like rocket science. The hardest part is actually just sitting down with somebody and asking for help. Yeah. And, and putting up with whatever they need to do or process or be anxious about and bite your lip and just keep going. <laughs> I'm glad you found it helpful. Extremely helpful. Such that you're now making a video. Relax. I know it's not on the I know it's not on the list of things I was supposed to do today, but No. I was just inspired because it was incredibly helpful to have some objective person help me get out of the spinning analysis paralysis that I was in around feeling overwhelmed by everything that I need to do. Well, that's also half the battle with you and I because I'm, I'm not sure you always perceive me to be the, the objective party because I have... This is getting into marriage counseling have, now, so I think we're going to end the video right now. Okay, have, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Just get a partner and uh, get a blank pad of paper and uh, you listen for your friend or loved one. Write everything down. Ask lots of questions. Bite your lip. Be patient. G have them get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Help them stay focused and then swap and do the same. And there you have it. Let us know if that helps you stop feeling paralyzed and overwhelmed. <laughs> one more. Yes. What's your name? Delaney. Hi, Delaney. Hi. Um, I wanted to start off by saying I listened to your segment with Alex to those feeling lost in your 20s. Oh, yeah. She's talking about call her daddy. <laughs> you can't call me out like that at work. Yes, but... you can. <laughs> Girl, that is the number one female hosted podcast in the world. Yeah. But I wanted to say, you said earlier in terms of the five second rule, the easiest part is knowing what you need to do. Um, I feel like I've been a little overwhelmed lately. What would you say or the biggest piece of advice when you don't know what you need to do before you save five seconds? Are you talking about work? Or are you talking about life in general or? I think all of the above, right? Okay, great question. How many can relate to this? Excellent, okay, so when it comes to work, a really great habit to get into, especially as y'all are making this big turn, is try to have a quick alignment meeting with the person you report to every Monday. And just go over what's on your plate and recheck in about what are the strategic objectives for this week so that you're aligned with what the person who you're reporting to. Because I'll give everybody the super simple secret other than visibility for being a rock star at work. Make your boss's life easier. Literally, you, you make the person that you report to's life easier because you're getting stuff done and you're solving problems. And here's the most important thing, you're communicating about what's getting done. You literally are a superstar because your boss is just as overwhelmed as you are. And so if you just touch base, even if you can't get a meeting and you send the 17 things on your plate and you say, I'm a little overwhelmed, I just want to make sure that I know what the priority is this week. Because it is changing all the time because they're responding as much as you are. That's number one. Number two, at the end of the week on Fridays, send a short email saying, this got done, this got done, this got done, this got done, this got done. And here are the things I'm going to need your help with on Monday. You keep somebody in the loop like that, they will help you create rails that keep you very focused and feeling more sure about what you're working on, okay? So that's number one, ask for help. Do not try to figure that out on your own. Number two, when it comes to feeling lost in life and overwhelmed in life, always go back to your morning routine. Always go back to your morning routine. And there are two rules that I have for my morning routine. Everybody hates them. Nobody follows them. It changes your life. Number one, do not sleep with your phone. Do not sleep with your phone. And the reason why I say do not sleep with your phone is because we're all addicted to it. If you were addicted to cocaine or alcohol, you wouldn't put it on your bedside table. <laughs> but, you know, you literally go to bed and then 
before you're even out of bed, you're literally doing this. And you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And like, if you're laying in bed reading work emails or looking at Facebook, you literally just let your boss, sorry Tia, and, 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 and all of your friends on Facebook walk in your bedroom. And more importantly, you let the world hijack your mind. So before you're even vertical, you are stressed out, overwhelmed. That one change, which you're not going to want to do, will solve the problem of overwhelm. And here's what I do. I plug my phone into the bathroom every night because it solves two problems. Number one, when that alarm goes off, now I'm really screwed because it's not next to me. So I have to get out of bed. Number two, the phone's not there. So as I wake up and I walk to the bathroom, I'm so mad at myself. But by the time I get to the bathroom, I'm now awake enough that I can turn the alarm off and flip the phone over. I don't pick it up. I don't do it. Even if I post things in the morning, I do that after I take 30 minutes for myself. What do I do in those 30 minutes? Well, I do all the stuff that you know that makes you feel better. I literally journal for a second. I move my body. This is a life changer. If you literally just work out for 10 minutes in the morning, it can be enough. I eat something healthy, I have a cup of coffee, I set my intention for the day, I think about the one thing I want to make progress on, and only then do I then pick up that phone. Then I let the world in. And by getting myself right with myself and setting myself up and giving myself 30 lousy freaking minutes to start the day, to clear my head, to think about what I want out of the day, to take care of myself just a little bit, now I'm in a better place. Now I'm able to do it. And then there's one more uh, exercise that's kind of a spin on the person you want to be. So my daughter's 23 and had a really rough time with COVID. The last two years of her college imploded because of COVID. And she left college basically depressed, really unhealthy, drinking way too much, and she like had a meltdown. And so she said, I sat down with her and, her, and you know, my husband, and we just were talking with her. And, I said, here's what I want you to do. If you ever feel overwhelmed or lost, I want you to draw a line down the center of a paper, and I want you to think back, when was a moment in my life where I felt happy, and I felt like I was happy about where my life was headed? And so my daughter said, senior year in high school. And I said, great, what were you doing then? What was life like then? She's like, well, I was getting up early, I was going to school, I saw my friends every day, I was playing uh, lacrosse, so I exercised six days a week, I was only drinking two uh, nights a week, I had something to look forward to. I'm like, great, now let's write down what your life looks like right now. Oh, I'm sleeping till noon, my friends have all left and started their lives, I drink every day, I'm not exercising. I'm like, great, compare the lists. You are wired for happiness. You're wired for clarity. You are wired for success. It's why you miss it when you don't have it. You can only miss something you know. The answers are in there. And so like we've said with a lot of the things, even though it's overwhelming, there are ways, simple ways that you can solve this. Go to your boss, start getting aligned, get direction, and then do what they tell you to do. That'll give you the structure right there. Ask for help always. Second thing is, go inside and take a look at what your habits looked like and your days looked like when you felt a little bit more in control, when you felt like yourself, and then compare with what you're doing now. Come back to your morning routine and you will set yourself up to have a day that feels like you're in control, and that'll change everything. That was a great question. Hi, you did it! Yes, you did it. You did it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you're welcome. You. My friend group, we're big fans, awesome. especially we're transitioning just out of college right now. So, yeah, your podcast with Alex was great timing for me. And what did you get out of that conversation that I had with Alex? Um, I got especially the relationship one. I, I don't know how you said it, but kind of, I need to fix who I am first because, like, a relationship's kind of like a mirror of what you're feeling in a way. Even worse, a relationship I, amplifies what you're feeling. Yeah. So yeah. if you go after that person mm -hmm. no. and you're feeling insecure and so you're chasing that person that's the hot guy and if he only or she or da, 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 da. even if the person ends up being with you mm -hmm. you're actually going to feel insecure mm -hmm. 
is because you didn't enter the relationship feeling good about yourself. So you're a thousand percent right. Work on yourself first because then you bring that to every relationship and then the relationship is just additive to you versus amplifying the crap that you're trying to run the book. Yeah. And I only know that after really screwing things up in my 20s and 30s. Like literally disaster. I would attach myself to people in order to prove that I was okay. And it just made me feel worse about myself because I needed them to feel okay. So when the relationship broke up, I crumbled. I'm struggling with the fact that I feel like I should be getting um, a lot done. I'm blessed with all this time now and uh, I'm not getting shit done. <laughs> I'm not. Why do you think you should be getting stuff done? Um, well, because part of my, you know, when I was really busy all the time, which has been, gosh, you know, most of the last 30 years where I've been working with the same company and, exec, you know, building up a, to an executive position, I always wanted more time. And I was actually working on, have been working on starting my own side business. Um, and time was a constraint. So I'd be like doing training on my commute, you know, in the back listening to things, finding, fitting in it wherever I can. And all of a sudden I have all this time and I'm using the time to stress and procrastinate. And of course I have the kids. I have my, um, I've adopted my two little granddaughters. They're, uh, one turned five today and the other one's six. And so I'm, you know, they're off of school and, um, so, you know, well, and that's now, first of all, let me, let's, let me start you there. Happy birthday to your granddaughter. And, uh, you said that you had a full-time job. Are you working right now? No, they, I was furloughed on March 20th. Okay. And, um, part of the stress is it's the way that I was furloughed. I mean, it's, there's a lot of uncertainty and I know there is anyway, but it wasn't, uh, sort of after the fact. It makes me feel like they don't want me back. And things have been, my job was great. I was like the superstar person there for 28 years. And about two years ago, they suddenly changed my position um, and moved me into an, you know, something I didn't want to do, but it was lateral, but I kind of had no choice. Yeah. Um, and it was around the same time that uh, it was, I was starting the process of adopting my grandkids. And um, I don't know, I don't know for sure that that's what it is, but I know that that's when I had the schedule where I had limited more limited hours to work, um, you know, down to like 45 or 48 instead of, you know, 55 to 60. So they furloughed you and it feels more like a firing. Right. Because I had to turn in my keys. They shut off my email the next day. Then they called and asked for my laptop. Um, and I said, I'm not using it, but sure you can have it, but what's the rush? They're like, Oh, we're just calling them all in. So then they had somebody come pick it up. Uh, this was five days after I was furloughed or so. And, they cleared out the rest of my office. I took two boxes with me when I left because they asked us to clear, um, you know, clear everything out. And I've been there for, you know, forever. So I had a big office full of stuff. Well, then I had five more boxes of stuff. They cleared every desk drawer, everything off the walls. Um, it doesn't not feel... easy. No. And I have, you know, it's 30 years of my life. <laughs> So you're in the same camp as um, anybody that lost something and didn't expect to lose it, whether it was the college graduation or the internship this summer or a 30-year job. Yeah. And so you've got, on one hand, the disruption, how discombobulating and surprising it is, how confusing it is. And we could sit here all day and make up stories about, well, they're just following protocol because gosh knows how long this is going to last. And they're probably right. just being fiscally responsible. And it'd be a lot harder to get that laptop back six months from now if they had to close the whole thing down than to just do it all with everybody right now. Yeah. Or it could be, hey, let's use this as a chance to get rid of people that we were wanting to get rid of anyway. Right. I don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. It is a total waste of time to sit and try to figure out what do we think is happening. And so what I want you to do instead is to focus on what you want to have happen now. Okay. Because let's assume you're not going back. Right. You are now the primary caregiver to a six and a five year old. Mm -hmm. You have a side business and you cannot seem to be able 
to focus. And the reason why you can't focus is a combination of all of the disruption that happened in your life and the stress it creates and add to it the pandemic and all the stress that that creates. Add to that any of the financial issues that you may be thinking about and all the stress that that creates. And when you feel stressed in your body, Heidi, I want you to understand that what happens is it rises the level of cortisol in your body. And when cortisol hits this part of your brain, it impacts your ability to focus. So there's a direct connection between an increase in stress and anxiety and worry and a decrease in your ability to direct your focus. Okay. And so the other thing that makes this really difficult, and I can see you getting emotional, mm -hmm. what's coming up for you? Um, it's just a huge part of my um, identity has been uh, my career. Yeah, and you know what else has been a huge part of your life? Because this is something that I am experiencing, is I was what you call an over-functioner. Mm -hmm. Very busy, constantly yeah. on the move. Yeah. <laughs> and Right? And you are probably a bit of an extrovert, too. Yeah. And so the nature of what we're going through has also highlighted the fact that you stayed busy as a way to not have to deal with the things that stress you out. Mm -hmm. And when somebody like you or me gets forced to slow down, all this stuff comes up that we don't want to deal with. Yeah. And the more that you resist all of these feelings, the longer you're going to stay spinning and the longer that you're going to not be able to focus. And what you need, given that the way that your life used to be just got ripped from you, mm -hmm. is you need to come up with a plan for what you're going to do next. Right. So are you going to look for a job? Are you going to do something else and invest in this side hustle? What are you going to do? Okay, well, uh, I might say if I, if I don't get called back to work by June, I thought it would be smart of me to make a move to the mainland. Because the way things were going last year with my job, and I've always been this star performer, and everything, you know, just a star performer, part of the team, you know, really close with everybody at work, and I'm catching up for the first time, I have to perform with you. Okay, so can I just slow you down? Yeah. Because what I just heard you say is that even going back a year, mm -hmm. you got your first poor review, yeah. and you can feel that things are going like this. Yeah. And that is a piece of data that's very important. Mm -hmm. And you said you were going to wait until June to see if they bring you back. And if they don't bring you back, then you're going to make a move to the mainland. Yeah. So here's what I want to unpack for you. Okay. I am working on a book on decision making. Okay. And I want to road test an idea with you. Okay. Because when I hear you say that things were going downhill, but you're going to wait until they decide, what I hear is somebody giving all the power to somebody else. Okay. And I believe that there are only two kinds of decisions that we make. We make what I call a noisy decision, mm -hmm. or we make a quiet decision. And I want to teach you right now how to make a quiet decision. Okay. A noisy decision is the type of decisions that most of us make all the time. They are driven by the noise of what's going on around us, driven by the noise of fear, driven by the noise of anxiety, driven by the noise of pleasing other people driven by the noise of being a good girl, driven by the noise of your self-doubt, driven by the noise of all the things that you do and have always done in the way that you've always done them. And then there's the quiet decision. And a quiet decision is one where you take a deep breath and you tune out all the fear and all the shit that everybody else is saying and you go in here and you ask yourself, what 
do I want? And so let's do that right now. If you remove fear from the equation and you remove all of the noise and the doubt and overwhelm and everything you're feeling, don't worry about the how, don't worry about the when of whatever. To, I want you to just go right in here and get very quiet, quiet enough so that you can hear your own voice for a second. What do you want? This is what I was thinking about late last year um, when I started doing Best Decade Ever. I started, you know, think, thinking about that. I think what I wanted to come up with an e-commerce business. Um, and I've been studying towards that because I want to have time freedom, especially at my age. You know, I'm 55 and I have two little kids that I need to support and, you know, all the way through that. I, I mean, I love that they keep me, you know. <laughs> I don't know what I mean without that right now. But uh, so I want to have flexibility and time freedom. And I did think about this when I told my actual water property in my hometown that I grew up in. I took out a loan for the down payment out of my retirement account. And so can I ask you a question? Because here's what I hear. I hear you saying you want to pursue this side business mm -hmm. and that you want to move. Yes, it's hard to be quiet, but I think it's the best thing. Okay, so, so listen, so when you tune out the noise uh -huh. and the fear, yeah. what do you want? Say it to me specifically without explaining why. I want to move and yeah, I want to, I want to move and start a new life, start over again. Terrific. Okay, there you go. There's your decision. Yeah. So fuck what this company does. Yeah. You want to move. Yeah. And that is a quiet decision. It's a decision that chooses you. It's a decision that comes from courage. It's a decision that is purposeful. And so now what we do is move into the execution part of that decision. We have decided you're moving. Okay. So when are you moving? Um, I think by, I think August, September later. I want you to pick a date. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll just say... August 31st. <laughs> Terrific. August 31st, you're moving. Okay. You've just made a quiet decision. Now it's your job to figure out how to get it done and what steps to take when. Okay. What does it feel like right now to know that you've made a decision? Um, in a way, it feels calm. In another way, like, you know, I start around, hey, I have to do this, 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 you know, that's coming up for me, but it's also like, come on, I've been leaning towards this decision, but I have people saying, well, I'm going to give up this job. You know, like, that's the noise. Yeah. So other people are making a decision not to do it for you. Mm -hmm. That's why you got to tune out the noise and right. tune into what you're quietly telling yourself. Yeah. And so you have just made a decision, mm -hmm. you're going to move, mm -hmm. and all I invite you to do for the next five days, you don't have to do anything. You've already, I'm sure, applied for unemployment. Mm -hmm. I want you to just sit with this decision. I want you to start to get excited about the decision, and starting this weekend, you can start making a plan to make the decision happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, I always say you're one decision away from a different life. Mm -hmm. And that's because when you're swirling in uncertainty and self-doubt and confusion, one decision will cut through all of that noise that's keeping you stuck. And it will give you clarity, purpose, and confidence. And that's what you just did today. Good job, Heidi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for checking this video out. And if you like this one, I have a feeling you're going to like this one too. I'll see you there.